Today we're thinking about motivation and why it's crucial, in my humble opinion, that we think about what motivates our child rather than what motivates us. So this works with loads of different kinds of behaviour change. Perhaps there's a child that you're supporting who is trying to stop self-harming or you're trying to overcome an eating disorder or you're trying to support them to attend school if they're anxious about that. Whatever the behaviour, trying to be driven by your child's motivation will mean you're more likely to be successful, I believe. Um, here is why. What often happens is that we take the issue, the problem, the thing that we're trying to change, fix, solve, whatever words you want to use there, and we think about it from our point of view or the point of view of other adults, often looking at the medium and sometimes the very long-term motivations for trying to get this right. So you perhaps have a child who's struggling to attend school and you're thinking about their educational outcomes, their likelihood to succeed later in life and so on and so forth. With eating disorders, it's often thinking about, you know, long-term fertility and health and so on and so forth. And the thing we need to get our heads around is that for your typical 12, 13, 14, 15 year old, they don't care about those long-term aims. What they care about is right now. Um, and that's okay. We only ever have right now, and right now is what matters most. Granted, as a parent, teacher, head, senko, educational psychologist, you've got your eye on other things. But for the child, right here, right now is what really matters. So instead of taking our kind of lofty aims, aspirations, motivations, we need to zone in on what actually matters to the child, what motivates them, why might they want things to be or feel a little bit different. Now, those motivations might not make sense to us, they might seem really insignificant and just something we find it hard to align with. Maybe you are supporting a kid who really finds going into school tough but really, 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 really like to go on the day when their friends are playing marbles in the playground. <laughs> I just went back in time to like Victorian times. So I don't know, maybe they're gonna talk about Fortnite or whatever, but maybe there's something that their friends are doing or talking about that they wanna engage with. Maybe there's a particular friend that they like. Maybe there's a particular club that they like. Maybe there's one lesson um, that really motivates them. Maybe there's a particular member of staff that they can see on a certain day. Maybe Thursday is sausage roll day. Whatever it is, however small and insignificant and unaligned with your long-term aims for the child, this is what is going to make the difference to them. This sausage roll day on a Thursday, that's a genuine example, is the thing that will enable your child to put in the hard work needed to do the hard things, overcome the anxiety, address the challenges, and try really hard to make that change happen. They will not be motivated to do that for the very, very long-term goals of educational outcomes or social development or being fertile and having babies one day or whatever our, our, our lofty aspirations might be. So zone in on the tiny, work with your child, work out what their motivations are and use those motivations to frame the change that you're trying to achieve and keep returning to those motivations. It will make your child feel heard. It will enable them to engage with the process because there's something in it for them. There's actually something here they want to achieve. And the good news is our aims, our aspirations, that lofty big stuff in the long term distance, we're still working towards that. We're just using their short-term quick wins as a means of getting there. So actually, everybody wins. I hope that's helpful. Until next time, bye from me and bye-bye from Mork. <laughs>